Joe Biden wants this election to be about Hitler versus George Washington. And of course, he's George Washington and Donald Trump's Hitler. I want to remind some of you that the Democrat Party uses the Hitler card as much as they use the race card, as much as they use all their cards. They called Barry Goldwater Hitler. They called Ronald Reagan Hitler. They called George W. Bush Hitler. And now they call Donald Trump Hitler. But the real Hitlerians in the world, they don't call Hitler. They don't call Xi Hitler or Putin Hitler or the regime in Iran run by Hitler. They don't even call the head of Hamas or Hezbollah Hitler. No, no, no. It's only conservatives and Republicans who are Hitler. Pretty sick. And for those Holocaust survivors out there on behalf of a nation, our nation, I want to apologize to you for the way the Democrat Party and the media throw around that word Hitler. When you look at your arms and you see burned numbers into your flesh and you know who Hitler was and the Third Reich was and to watch the likes of MSNBC and CNN and the pages of the New York Times and Washington Post throw around Hitler like it's no big deal. It's pretty sick. But they will stoop to anything and everything for power. So there's Joe Biden. He's giving a speech at Valley Forge. He was going to give it on January 6th, but in climate weather, they decided just in case they move it to January 5th. No George Washington there. We know what took place at Valley Forge, one of the worst winters in modern American history. The deaths, the disease, and the great commander of our armed forces during the revolution, George Washington, a future president. He withstood it all, but not, but not Joe Biden. He just wants to use George Washington, which is amazing to me since the Democrat Party has been attacking the founders of this nation as white supremacists and slaveholders. But there he is. He wants to remind you about George Washington and the American founding in our history. Joe Biden, who supports the 1619 Project, which destroys the whole idea that the nation was founded in 1776. It's amazing, is it not? Joe Biden, who supports CRT and ESG and DEI, talks about white supremacy, the seed of white supremacy, the American Revolution. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, as they wave around the Constitution, all of a sudden they need it and they use it. These are liars. These are scam artists. They want to talk about democracy? That's fine. Even though we're a constitutional republic, we don't have a parliamentary system like Israel, Britain, and Italy. We'd be a very different country. Our framers worked hard to create a republic, a constitutional representative republic with three branches, with a constitution, with limited powers. So Joe Biden's giving speeches about a subject he knows nothing of and a constitution he swore to uphold that he apparently hasn't read. In the 1970s, Joe Biden, you joined Senate Democrat racists and segregationists, including James Eastland and John Stennis of Mississippi, Herman Talmadge of Georgia, Robert Byrd of West Virginia, in opposition to integrating our public schools. And as many scholars have written, you weren't just an observer or a minor partner. You were one of the leaders. You were one of the leaders. You befriended Eastland when you came to the Senate. You befriended Stennis. You wrote love letters to each other. We have those. Stennis gave you the actual desk on which the 1956 Southern Manifesto was written and signed. A manifesto, a racist segregationist manifesto that America will never be integrated, not the South anyway. And you considered it an honor to receive that desk. You knew Eastland and Stennis and Robert Byrd, who you called your mentor, led the filibuster against the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but you didn't care. In 1977, you said, unless there is orderly integration, I quote you, orderly integration, my children are going to grow up in a jungle, the jungle being a racial jungle, unquote. It's about the most racist statement I've ever heard a president make, certainly since LBJ. In the 1980s, you campaigned for president in the South, touting praise you received from George Wallace, a well-known segregationist who called you one of the outstanding young politicians of America. You thought that was great. And you were down there campaigning, quoting George Wallace. And you have a long, sordid history of making racist comments, even up to modern times. So long that I'm not going to waste the next five minutes of this monologue 
to describe them. Now Biden portrays himself as a former civil rights leader. He's a liar. About Selma, he's a liar. Oh, uh, Nelson Mandela, he was put in jail, you know, because he supported the release of Mandela. He's a liar. Now he's the great white knight for democracy, the great white knight for the black community. Why? Joe Biden hasn't lifted a finger for democracy or the black community. As a matter of fact, he's undermined both. He's a wrecking ball. Let's look. Joe Biden has always, and to this day, opposed a school choice, the most important civil rights issue of our time, particularly in the inner cities where they crummy schools that are crime-ridden and where parents want their kids to get an education. Joe Biden says, no, screw you. I stick with the teachers' unions. Wow. He's done so much for those communities. He hasn't lifted a finger to seriously deal with inner city crime. He doesn't even talk about it. He doesn't say anything to his buddy George Soros, a sugar daddy for the Democrat Party and all these radical left movements. He doesn't say, get out of our party. No, he supports them and the other progressives. He's driven food prices through the roof, through the roof, which means that poor people especially are having difficulty making ends meet. I go to fast food restaurants. I go through the drive through I don't know, one meal. It's 11 to $12 a person. You got to feed people three times, three times a day. How can you afford this? Well, with Bidenomics, you can't. Biden has praised Talib, a Jew hater. He's praised Sharpton, whose anti-Semitic history is well known. And he went to Sharpton's organization to get their support last time he ran. He never condemns the anti-Semites by name in his party. Never. He accommodates them. Now, let's talk about the Constitution. And, Mr., I'm defending democracy. First Amendment. Biden, his regime set up a national disinformation board in the notoriously named Department of Homeland Security. To what? To curb uh, the information sharing that's not accurate, according to the government. Well, they had to back out of that once it was revealed, but they're now doing it in the shadows. They haven't stopped. Biden's regime pressured social media platforms in what is the most massive attack on free speech since Woodrow Wilson, another racist Democrat. Biden's Department of Justice, the inspector general revealed that over one million searches, secret searches of United States citizens was conducted by the FBI under Biden. Some 3.39 million searches of Americans were conducted in 2021, a 300% increase from 2020. Biden's party has pressured cable carriers, their members on the Hill, to deplatform Fox and OAN and Newsmax. They want no competition. Biden aligns stealth tracking groups, pressure campaigns to drop advertising on conservative outlets. Democracy, he says. Let's talk about Obama-Biden. In 2015, the Committee to Protect Journalism accused the Obama-Biden administration of an unprecedented number of prosecutions of government sources that talk to the media and seizures of journalist records. AP and other news organizations were appalled. They went public with it. Well, there's more. The Obama-Biden administration used the IRS against over 400 Tea Party groups. Oh, that's democratic, wouldn't you say, America? The Biden regime has targeted the parents of school children, the Catholic Church, pro-life movement, and nonviolent protesters, sending SWAT teams out, heavily armed SWAT teams, to arrest them. That's the First Amendment. They are relentlessly attacking the rest of the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment. They want to ban guns through the CDC if they can. The Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, the Tenth Amendment. The Bill of Rights are under attack by the Democrats and their man Biden. They're using the Fourteenth Amendment to try and deny Donald Trump access to state ballot positions. Oh, let every vote count. And of course, they're lying about the basis for doing it. They're threatening to use the 14th Amendment to seize the power of the purse from the House of Representatives. That is a core function of the legislature. It is a core part of Congress. But Biden thinks he has the power to do all that himself if Congress doesn't bend to his demands. 
Ah, democracy, America. Biden and his party went to eliminate the Electoral College, so you have a national popular vote where basically 11 blue states control the entire government. They're relentlessly attacking the independence of the Supreme Court and its conservative members because they're trying to force the court, threaten the court, to comply with its will and its agenda. They want to get rid of the Senate filibuster rule, so there's no way to stop their agenda. They want to add four more Democrats to the Senate through the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico so the Republicans can never win a majority in the Senate. Wow, that democracy. They want to nationalize state election laws, turn the whole country into California, so you only have super majorities of Democrats in the House and in the Senate, of course, always in the presidency. They oppose voter identification. They claim it's racist. Meanwhile, they're monitoring all of us, and they want us to register our guns. And they want to destroy the voting system while claiming to defend it with voter harvesting. Who's ever heard of counting ballots after an election's over? And they have other tools and tricks that they have used constantly. And most of all, immigration. And I barely have touched the list. Immigration. Patriotic, traditional immigration, I support 100%, and so do every American, virtually every American in this country. What we do not support is open borders that have as their purpose the destruction of our national sovereignty, the destruction of citizenship, the dumbing down of citizenship, and the destruction of our schools, the destructions of our culture, because there's no assimilation taking place in society generally. In other words, we oppose what happened to Athens. We oppose what happened to Rome. And we do not want it to take place in this country. There is no definitive reason for doing what Joe Biden's doing on this border other than to undermine the Constitution, undermine the citizenry in this country, and undermine what he calls democracy. This will be a long campaign, so I'm just starting. Joe Biden doesn't stand for democracy. He wants to fundamentally transform America, just like his buddy, Barack Obama. Well, if you want to fundamentally transform America, you have to defy the limits in the Constitution. You have to issue executive orders like lollipops on Halloween, which is exactly what he does. You have to change equality to equity. Men are women. Women are men. So you have to destroy women's sports. You have to control language and pronouns. You have to do all these things, which he's doing and more by dictatorial fiat out of the White House. No, Joe, you don't support democracy. You even defied the Supreme Court in two rulings when it comes to the student loans. They said, Joe, you can't do that. Joe says, oh, yes, I can. Watch me. The Supreme Court said, Joe, you can't use the CDC or any of these uh, medical agencies as a basis for shutting down and forcing uh, landlords to freeze their rent rates. He says, oh, yes, watch me. So he does it anyway. He attacks the court. He undermines the court. He attacks the Congress. He undermines the Congress. He attacks the Constitution. He undermines the Constitution. He issues fiats. He issues directives. And then he goes out there in public and he makes the most outrageous statements about tens of millions of Americans. MAGA! MAGA! You know why they hate MAGA? Trump, of course. But what does MAGA stand for? Make America great again. Joe Biden doesn't believe in that. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.